fuel from the buried waters in the frozen uh, uh, on the aquifers on Mars. There's water in the poles of moon. We take the water, split the hydrogen and the oxygen, make rocket fuel. If there's a new device that does that, this gets patented. This gets writ large on the daily newspapers. And the, that <coughs> operates like a force of nature on the educational pipeline. You don't need special programs under that umbrella. You don't need special programs to convince kids to be interested in science because the discoveries are coming at them left and right. You don't need special tariffs or tax, tax benefits so that companies keep their factories in America. If you agree that you're a global economy, it is the duty of a corporation to prop produce that product as cheaply as it can, and if it's got to take it to the Philippines to do it, it is expected that that's what they will do. But then we want to cry foul, as we've been doing lately. In the 1960s, no factories went overseas. You know why? Because we were innovating. And when you innovate, you make innovative products that no one else can make because they haven't figured out how to do it yet. That's how you keep your job. People go around putting up band-aids because I don't think they can think in higher multi-connectivity. It, it's, oh, we need more science students. Let's make, it, make a better science teacher. Okay, there's a band-aid right there. You put the tariffs for the factory. Oh, you want to innovate? There's some innovation industries. Let's throw some money their way. There, now we're done. Oh, no, no, no. You don't get it. You don't get it. I'm sorry. That's almost like saying, we want people to think about tomorrow again. Let's have a new World's Fair where we think about tomorrow. No, you missed the point. The World's Fair of 1964 did not create the 1960s. Our missions to the moon created that World's Fair. It created the culture out of which that World's Fair rose. So make sure you know where the cart is and where the horse is when you're trying to solve these problems. So I submit to you that not only would a healthy space program bring you this force of nature getting people interested in STEM fields, even if you're not a STEM interested person, you can't deny the value of science, technology, and engineering on what it is to make tomorrow come, on the value of your, your economy. And so it influences artists. Journalists, attorneys, you might go into space law. There's a new company that just started uh, planetary resources. They want to mine asteroids. They're going to be lawyers for that. All right? So then we have lawyers chasing asteroids instead of ambulances. That, what do you think of that? that how about that? Okay? So when it is in your culture, it is in everybody's culture. The journalist starts doing more stories about space. The, the poets, as I said earlier, you, you start getting influenced even if you're not in the STEM field, and you create an innovation nation. That's the nation that goes forward, that has a pumped economy because everybody sees the value of innovation. And you also may know there, there are sectors of our society that are kind of anti-science, Okay, and, you know, the urge is, well, let's fight them. It's like, okay, but I, I, I don't have time for that. But you know what I do have time for? Making science writ large on the daily headlines. That community, who are kind of anti-science, they existed in the 1960s. But they were left no place to stand. Because everybody knew that it was innovations in science and technology that had us lead the world in every metric that mattered over that period. And we were going to the moon. So you can't stand there and say, oh, I don't like science. I don't. Science, I'll choose to not believe in science. Forcing me to repeat what I said on Bill Maher a year ago. He, he had people on his show, the show before, my first time on Bill Maher, I didn't quite know how to act yet. I don't know, I'm just being myself. 
He said, oh, Dr. Tyson, last week we had a liberal person and a, and a conservative, because that's how he does that. There's hot air here and hot air here, and he tries to mix them and think something's going to come out of that, right? So, so, um, so he said, they both deny global warming. What do you have to say about that? And my only, only answer I can give her, the good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. <laughs> Science, as I said, was writ large. You could, you had no place to stand in denial of it. They just sent you back, sent you back to your garage because you had no audience. You couldn't gain adherence because everyone knew better. That's the way you fix that problem. Not running after people, hitting them over the head. We tell ourselves this is a free society. People ought to be able to think however they want, vote however they want. But it ought to be an informed landscape. And if it's not, trouble follows. So, how do we fight politics? How do you fight politics? <laughs> how do we fight politics? Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I like that. I like that. By the way, I was going to give my like my very last line of this talk. I was like warming up for it. It was like, come. It was like right there. But I'll I'll put a pause in this and I reply. Okay. Uh, as an academic. I'm an astrophysicist, that's what I do. I'm culturally, and I, I do other stuff too, obviously, but I am wired as an academic. I have academic values, all right? Which is why in my Reddit AMA session, someone asked, oh, good, thank you. If, if you don't know what, is, I don't know if I could even explain that. <laughs> It's a place where people go when they really should be doing their homework, but they just, and they pick some topic and they just have at it. And it is just so rich with energy and emotion and passion. And, and I was invited to give an Ask Me Anything session uh, where I just sit there and the people just ask. And I'm just like firing out answers, you know. And I, I, I had three sessions, two, three hours each, and the last one was only one hour. But that's my... my AMA trilogy. In there, someone asked, and I forgot what it is they asked. No, no, I know, but there was a, something else. Uh, see, I forgot what I was going to say. Okay, hang on. So about the politics. Go back to the AMA in a minute. About politics. In my culture, politics is a barrier between where you're standing and where you want to go. Every time. Every time. Okay? That's in academia. You move to Washington, D.C., politics is the currency. It is the thing. It is not a barrier. It is what it is. And so the most ineffective scientists out there are those who just bust into Washington and believe they can just put truth on the table and let it ride. No. It took me a while, but I, under, I think I understand the politics now. And so let me find the forces that influence politics. And you know something? Spending big money on space, that's a political solution, not a scientific one. Because science never drove space exploration. Neither did discovery, neither did the urge. It's in our DNA. Oh, we are Americans, so we're explorers. It is nature's... We must explore or we die. None of that has ever been revealed in the history of exploration. War, I don't want to die driver. Money, I don't want to die poor driver. That's what it is. So without the politics, nothing happens. I have, I don't like it, but I accept it and understand it. And once you understand it, you can then navigate it. Without an understanding, you trip on it, and you fall on your elbow. <laughs> now I'm going to read you my, my carefully composed final sentence here. <laughs> As 
as goes the health of our space frontier, so too goes the economic, the emotional, and the cultural health of this nation. Thank you all for your time.